Hi, my name is Kathy Moyn and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery in Lake Forest, California to talk about those blood-sucking insects, mosquitoes. Unfortunately, we're probably going to have a big mosquito year because of all the rain that we had. So I thought I would talk to you a little bit about what you can do in your yard to keep them out and to give you some little tips or facts about the mosquito itself. Unfortunately, there are about 3,000 varieties or species of mosquitoes in the world. So we aren't the only ones that share this misery. Um, they, uh, the female is the only one that bites and she needs that protein in order for her to be able to lay the eggs. Those little guys can lay 100 eggs at a time. So they really need that protein to get that done. It takes seven to 10 days for the egg to hatch and for them to be an adult and big enough to come and drink our blood themselves. Um, they can drink their entire body weight in blood. So that's similar to like a 100 pound person eating 100 pounds of hamburger. But I guess they need it for all them eggs. They are attracted to our body heat. They're attracted to carbon dioxide that we breathe out and the lactic acids that are in our sweat. So if you're sweating a lot or you're hiking out, they're, they're going to be looking for you. They can see us in 100, about 164 feet away. So they're just ready to pounce. Also, full moons will intensify their activity by 500% because they can actually see us. They are visual. They do look for colors. If you're wearing a light color or contrasting colors, they're also attracted to that. And some people get bit more than other people because it goes back to the body chemistry and things like that. Um, I'm sure there's all kinds of wife tales about what you can eat to keep them away, but just know that we are going to be prey this year. So, what I brought is I have some plants here that you can put in your yard that will help to keep them away. A lot of them right now that I'll show you right here are herbs. Now this is a lemon thyme and I have lemon balm. So now if you can see there's a little bit of citrusy kind of hint right here. They don't like citrus smells. I also have basil, and basil comes in all different shapes and sizes. This is just a regular old green leaf sweet basil or Italian basil. This one is an African blue. There's Thai basils. There's all kinds of different basils. Um, what's nice about them is you can eat these plants. I don't know about the lemon balm, but you can eat these other ones. They also, we also have mint, different kinds of mints. This just happens to be the best mint. They call it yerba buena. This one just happens to be a spearmint, but there's peppermint, there's chocolate mint, there's all kinds of mints. Um, now mints can be a little, can get a little out of the hand in the ground, so a lot of times I recommend them being by themselves in a pot um, because they, they'll spread underground and spread out. Now maybe that's something you want. I mean, if you've got the sun and you got the area, maybe you want some mint growing all over the place. Plus they're great in drinks and, and different things that you can cook with. Also have catnip believe it or not, which is in the cat mint family, M-I-N-T, cat mint family. Both of these will get a beautiful, this one especially, will get a beautiful blue flower. It ranges out about two feet, about 18 inches tall, and it has a beautiful flower in the summer. Of course, this is catnip, so if you got a cat, that'll be do double duty there. You'll have your drunken cat out and messing around in your catnip, scaring off the mosquitoes. Then these are Mostly perennials, the, er, the basils will not grow usually during the winter time. Um, and most of these want full sun. Basil will do, do better in the shade in the summertime or in a bright light area in the summertime part sun because it causes them to bolt and then once they bolt or flower, then they're not, they get stringy and they don't taste as good if you're using them for cooking. So nothing better than a good old caprese salad, right? So the thyme and the lemon balm do better in full sun. The catnip, catnip and catmint do better in full sun. Now we also have for other herbs is the good old marigold. Now this one, not herbs, other plants. This one here is a summer annual, meaning it's only going to grow in the summertime and it's going to flower throughout that time. It also re repels some other insects, but this one will work for mosquitoes. And we also have, this one is called floss flower. I don't know if you can see that little blue flower. They're just getting ready to flower. And this one will go all summer long and it will sometimes winter over in the winter. Again, these are full sun plants. And those are good bedding plants. This one can be used for a border. You could actually do a combo, this in front and this in back. 
Um, you can put them in pots, just put them on your patio tables, different things like that. That will work as well, same with the herbs. Then we also carry, we do have uh, California natives here, and the sages will actually repel the insects. So this one is called Robert Grimm, and this actually is a culinary variety of native um, sage. And then we also have this one here, um, Alan Chickering, and this one you probably have seen a lot out in the hillsides. Um, and then, of course, the white sage. There's all kinds of sages, native sages, that will work. And, of course, they need to be in a spot where it's dry, and they also want full sun. But, um, and a lot of these things, you can actually wipe them on your clothes, you know, just take some leaves and wipe them on your clothes, on your skin. Um, you could probably make a little uh, something with, in water and squirt, squirt it on you. Um, or just have them around the, the edges of your patio. We also carry, we sell a lot of this one. This one is a citronella geranium. As you can see, it's got a pretty flower on it. And it's citronella. That's where, you know, the candles, citronella candles will also get rid of the mosquitoes or re repel the mosquitoes. This one is a cedar almond scented, scented geranium. We also carry um, other varieties of scented geranium. They'll all work. This one happens to be a peppermint scented geranium. And like all geraniums, you can break a piece of it off, stick it in the ground, and keep it moist, and it will root and grow. So these you can actually put all over your yard if you wanted to. Um, and they're pretty, and they do have a fragrance. We've got rose-scented ones, there's a chocolate mint one, there's a chocolate one. I mean, there's all different kinds, and we carry a lot of those varieties on a fairly regular basis. Then another one that I like um, to use is a lavender. And as you can see, we've got some beautiful lavenders right now, and they're in full bloom. And these guys also will go in the full sun. They like to be dry between waterings, like your sages, most, and the geraniums too. So these will all work for our drought-tolerant gardens here in, the, in, in Southern California. I know you all think we're out of the drought. Don't let that kid you. We're not. <laughs> And it probably won't be for a while. But anyway, these are great for those uh, full sun areas. Again, can go in a pot, sit it in the patio as long as you got the full sun. You can also use Lantana. This one happens to be a trailing variety. There's also a white variety trailing. And then we have bush varieties. There's some dwarf ones that only get two feet. And there were some larger ones that can get up to six feet. So again, these are full sun, drought tolerant plants. Um, we also have, this one is a society garlic. This is a new variety that we started carrying. It has a large flower. They're called large flowering society garlic. And the foliage is a little finer than the typical society garlic that you see around, uh, around town. We use these a lot because they are very hardy. But any garlic or, or onion family will work as well to repel the mosquitoes. We also have rosemary. There's upright and spreading varieties of rosemary, usually either in a white flower or a blue flower throughout the summer. And these can also be used in cul for culinary purposes. And um, there's, like I said, the trailing one stays low and spreads, and the upright ones, there's some of them that only get a couple feet, and there's other ones that get huge. So you can use that throughout the gar your yard as well. And again, all of these will go in pots if you just have a patio that you want to put some on, or a small little patio. Um, they would be perfect for that. Also, we have, for those of us who do have small yards, Eucalyptus will repel mosquitoes. This one right here is a dwarf eucalyptus. This one is called Moon Lagoon Dwarf. He only gets six to 10 feet tall and eight to 10 feet wide, but you can certainly prune this. If you leave it in a pot, it's gonna to help to keep it smaller. And when you prune this stuff, you can bring it in the house and put it in arrangements. You can hang it as a sachet in the house, and that will also help to keep those mosquitoes away. So there's a lot of great plants that we have that will help to keep those little blood suckers out of our yards. Now, there's also some things you can do. Um, they can, again, they can only, they only need about a teaspoon of water to, to lay their eggs and actually hatch and get to adult. 
So anywhere where you have saucers in your yard, um, old tires, any, any place where holes in trees where it's divoted and, and that water is allowed to stand, they can get in there and lay the eggs. So you want to make sure that if you can, dump any extra water that you're not using. You have to watch out for bird baths and fountains. If you do have a bird bath and a fountain or something that you can't drain, you can use this. This is called mosquito bits. And this is a bacteria that will attack their digestive system. So if your dog or cat or children happen to drink out of the bird bath, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt the birds. It only kills the mosquito larvae. And I use it in my place because I've got areas where I collected rainwater. So I've got buckets with rainwater. I don't want to throw those out until I'm ready to use them. So I put the mosquito dunks in there. It's really a good product. Um, fountains, if you have fountains, like maybe you didn't have it running and it filled up with rainwater, you can put this in there if you don't want to drain it. Um, we also carry a, a wafer, it looks like a donut. You can break that into pieces and float that in the water because this is loose, it's kind of a bit. They call them bits. So then we also carry this one called Mosquito Beater. So this one you can spread around the foundation of your patio. This will do 4,000 square feet. It lasts three weeks. And this one has all organic products in it. It's uh, citronella oil, garlic, geranium oil, cedarwood oil, lemongrass oil. Now that's another one we carry. I don't have any right now. We were out this weekend, so I couldn't show you, is lemongrass. Um, we carry that one and bee balm. That one's not in yet, but it will be later in the summer, or later here when it gets warmer, a little bit warmer, consistently. Anyway. So here's some good things that you can put in your yard, some products that you can use around the house in order to keep those guys at bay as much as possible. Citronella candles will work as well. We do sell those. They're going to be coming in here pretty soon. And so, you know, it, unfortunately, they're here. And we need to try to do some things to help keep them away from our, our family and, our, and ourselves. So... Uh, if you liked what you saw, please click the like button. If you have not hit the subscribe button, please do so, so that you can find out when we're having more videos. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.